So just like life, gardening has its trials and tribulations. And if you persevere, you might have some success. Just keep going, just keep trying all kinds of new things and eventually find success. And that is what we have found in our backyard orchard and vineyard is this summer, 2023, is gonna go down in flames in the record books. It was one heck of a hot summer, but it's finally December. Hey, friends and family, and if you're just joining the channel, welcome, this is Aaron with AMZ Backyard Orchard and Vineyard, and this is gonna be our December backyard vlog. We have a cordage. We have over 20 varieties in the front of our property, and we are gonna be showing you the back of our property where we have another 20 or 30 fruit trees varieties in our backyard. This is Arizona growing zone 9B, and we are finally in December. We finally made it. We finally cooled down. We're finally getting some rain, much needed. And obviously those cool temperatures bring in our chill hours. And I'm gonna be showing you what varieties we are growing and also the chill hours so that if you want to grow these varieties at your property you'll at least know what kind of chill hour requirements because that is essential for growing in hot climates we are in growing zone 9b and this is just outside of phoenix arizona where we do get about three to four hundred chill hours and we have already started finally december we have finally cooled down in the mornings uh, the other morning it was 42 degrees so that's good that's considered a chill hour so anyhow i digress let's get to it and so if I was to record a video of everything that we are growing in our backyard and on our property, that video would probably be a half hour long because there are, there's so much growing on on our property. But let's get to it. I just wanted to show you just the back of our property. We've got all kinds of citrus and apples and all kinds of things. This little booger right here, we just planted in September. It's the Kalamondan mandarin. We've got a lot of mandarins in our backyard. Most of them are sit, uh, seedless. I believe mostly seedless, all of them are. And they're small, they peel easy, and they last a long time, especially in the refrigerator. So this is the Kalamondan. And then right next to it is the Clementine, also known as like the little cuties that you get at the grocery store. Sorry about the bird poop right there. But these little guys I just planted in September, they are mandarins and they grow fast. They can grow 15, 20 feet tall. They're on dwarfing rootstocks. So we're gonna keep them nice and small. Obviously they're right next to each other so they're gonna be able to pollinate each other. And that's a good thing because they flower at the exact same time. We've got other varieties and I'll show you right now. This big boy is our Orari Satsuma. It's another mandarin. Does really good in the heat. That's why we planted this right here. Eastern facing wall gets the afternoon shade. The Satsuma Orari mandarin. It's about two years old and we're hoping for some good flower buds on it. It's got some good mature growth from this past year. And hopefully it'll flower up quite a bit and it'll pollinate our other mandarins. We've also got some kumquats. Let's show you those. Here's one of our kumquats. We have two because they need to pollinate each other. They are self-pollinating. And they do it very well. Kumquats are in the citrus family, but I am told they are not an orange. They're not an orange. They're just a kumquat. I'm, I'll leave that down right there. I'll leave the name of, of what they are. Can't think of the, the name right now. I can't even spell it. But these kumquats do really good in pots. They do really good in pots. This thing's, uh, was this the third summer now in the ground, in the pot, I should say. And it continuously flowers. It has about four three or four bursts of flowers throughout the growing season, throughout summertime. Usually it starts flowering in like June when we're in the heat of our summer. And so a lot of the flowers just die off just because of the dry, hot winds that we get. So that's why we have it in the pot so that we can get it out of the heat and out of the wind when it is flowering. And that's why this thing is just full of fruit right now. Should have more on it, but we had one heck of a summer 
2023 like I mentioned and here's our other kumquat this one's doing really good it's very happy where it's at it's on a south facing wall right now we're in December winter time so I want to keep these citrus trees as warm as possible because they citrus really don't like temperatures like 50 degrees and below they tend to they tend to stop growing they slow down some of them even start having yellowing leaves so we want to keep these trees as warm as possible so that's why we move this one into the sun right now it's in the shade obviously but they do really good in pots all right so right next to it is our last of our mandarins we have another citrus tree but this is the meerkat mandarin first year in the ground i believe we planted this in spring of this year springtime which was I think it was March, I believe. March or February? March? Yeah. And it put on a ton of growth. It was just a twig when we bought it. Just a tiny little $5 twig, just a graft. And this thing's probably pushing, I don't know, three foot tall. It's got all kinds of fresh growth on it, just from the fall flush. This one may not have flowers, I believe citrus flowers on last year's growth so anything that grew last summer which technically would be this year should have some uh, flowering flowering wood on it so that's the that's the meerkat mandarin let's go check out the pomona sweet lemon all right we are here in the grove of our backyard orchard there's about seven different fruit trees here but you can start to see some of the lemons turning yellow which is great. This is our Pomona sweet lemon. I believe it just survived its, I want to say fifth summer in the ground. Sorry about the sunlight. I want to say this tree survived the fifth summer in the ground. In fact, we have a playlist just on this tree alone because it does so well, especially growing up against a wall. Look at this. And it just loves where it's at. These Pomona sweet lemons are like lemonade right off the tree i'm telling you they are sweet it's really weird they peel just like an orange you can eat them in those little sections you know little segments and they're delicious they're sweet it's like lemonade right off the tree you're expecting a sour acidic orange and these things are not at all they are sweet they are delicious squeeze them right into some water some ice water during the summertime yes summertime citrus have months and months of hang time it just it just makes me cry when I see people filling up buckets and buckets of lemons. What are you gonna do with all those lemons? Lemonade, fresh lemonade is only good for so long. Give them to friends, give them to family, but I'm telling you, leave them on the tree. The longer they stay on, the longer you can get photosynthesis and all the sugars and starches. Turn these things even sweeter and sweeter. Like I said, I've had citrus, pulled citrus right off the tree in June when it's 105 110 degrees here in Arizona leave your citrus on your trees if you don't if you don't need them leave them they'll hang on there they will hang on there if we get our winds in March and April we get our winds they might fall off but we're just gonna leave these on here I mean we're gonna eat them but we can we can leave them on here for months I digress let's move on and this stick right here as we go down the tree it's starting to feel the chill hours it's starting to drop its leaves it's our Katie apricot this tree's about three years old and it is just loaded up with it's got tons of just flowering buds on here there you go tons of flowering buds on here and they are starting to form and they need those chill hours to collect all the hormones. All the hormones that are going to be needed to grow the flowers, to produce viable sex hormones. So that we can have some apricots in the spring. We've got two of these. I'll show you the next one. They're about 60, about 60 feet apart from each other. You want them pretty close to each other if you're gonna have trees to pollinate each other. 
Pollination is not required on apricots. They do pretty good. They have both male and female parts in the flowers. But you're gonna have probably a bigger crop and a better crop and better quality fruit if you do have two of the same varieties or at least identical varieties, especially if they flower at the same time. But this is our other Katie apricot. She is just happy where she's at, up against the wall. 90% of what we are growing here on our property is up against the wall. I would say 80%, minus our, the front of our property. But the apricots, Katie apricots really do good in Arizona. There's several varieties that actually do really good. Gold Kiss does really good. Several varieties of apricots do really, really well in our heat, especially with those little low chill requirements. Right next to Katie, our Waddell, we've got a pair of pear trees. We got these at RSI Grower. Reed is one of my really good friends. Your trees are doing really good. These were grafts. These were very special trees to me. These were grafts. I told Reed I really want these trees and I want two of them because I want a lot of pears, obviously. I love fruit. But we wanted two pears for pollination and they were grafts. They were tiny, tiny little sticks connected to the rootstock. And that was three years ago now. And they are doing so good. In fact, this last fall flush, they grew like a foot. We pruned the heck out of these things because we want them low. And they grew a foot, look at this. From here, up here, that's all fall flush. Waddell, Arizona is where these trees were found. Massive tree, produces a ton of fruit. So obviously they do really well. Waddell is just right down the road from here and they do really good. So go to Reed, go to RSI Growers and get yourself some Waddell pears. All right, back in the corner of our property, we've got several varieties of apples. This is the Tropic Sweet Apple, another low chill variety of apples in Arizona against the south facing wall. If you have microclimates in your backyard, you can do this. You can see some of the sun scorch on these leaves. A little bit of sun scorch, but you water your trees properly and they'll survive our summers. And then they'll push out fall growth. And this thing's finally starting to get chilly. Starting to get those gold leaves in here. This is just one variety. I'll show you the other varieties of apples that we have here growing on our property. And they all are low chill hours and they all flower about the same time and they all pollinate each other. Gotta pollinate your apple trees. They do much better with pollination. Here's our other apple tree. In fact, I got a story about this if you got time. So we got this in September and this is a Dave Wilson nursery tree and it's grafted. It's got three different varieties of apples on it. And I don't know what they do at Dave Wilson nursery, but I'm sure they have some sort of scientific excuse, but this tree started flowering. In fact, it's still trying to push flowers. It started flowering at September. That is, completely 180 degree difference of when it should be flowering but I think they keep these trees in cold storage and then they sell them in September and then the trees come out of dormancy and then they want to flower because they think it's springtime and then they produce fruit so these kind of worried about this tree because it may or may not produce a whole lot of flowers and apples next year but We'll get through another year and it'll hopefully reset itself. This variety is the Golden Door set. And then it was grafted on. And then it has an other Anna Apple. And then this branch is the Einsheimer. All low chill hours. So that branch right there is an Einsheimer apple tree. This one is the Golden Door set right there. And then this is the Anna. Anna is a heavy producer. All of these spurs growing on Anna. So we're gonna keep her like in a spalier. We're gonna keep these side branches in a spalier because we've got the room right up against the wall. Watch us grow this tree and get some apples. Hopefully we'll get some apples in September. I'm sorry, <laughs> in the spring, I should say. We bought it in September, so. Anyhow, those apples are not gonna be good. They're gonna be falling off pretty soon. We're starting to get our chill hours, so. Those are our apple varieties. We've got four different, four different varieties of apples. We are gonna be grafting the heck out of our apple trees because we're just gonna turn them all into Frankensteins. 
we're going to be pulling some of these branches off, pruning them, and grafting them onto our other varieties. Those are our apples. We've got a little tropical section over here. We've got our plumerias doing really good. They are in the ground. We've got about four different varieties of plumerias just growing right there. I know they're not a fruit tree, but they look beautiful right next to our papaya tree. We planted this, gosh, I'm gonna say maybe a year ago, and it was a one-year-old tree. And it's got fruit on it. They told me the first year in the ground, it'll produce fruit, and we've got papayas. Look at these bad boys. Big old papaya right there. Just starting another one right there. Another papaya growing there. So very happy, very excited about that. It's a Brazilian papaya. They can be planted by seed. It's kind of a 50-50 hit if it's going to be a self-pollinating, if it's going to be a female, or if it's going to be a male. So maybe that's what, 33.3% chance of it actually producing. But we struck gold and we got a producing papaya tree. They can grow up to 30 feet tall. And so these are our peaches. This is our desert gold peach. It's the main tree. Desert Gold Peach, another low chill hour. It does really good here in the desert, hence the name. But we also grafted on a Red Baron Peach. The graft is right there, that little tag is. And then we grafted on a Saturn Peach, also known as the Donut Peach. There's the graft right there. But it did not, I don't know if it took or not, but we had peaches on it. They were very sweet and delicious, but then our summer heat, I believe, knocked out the, uh, I believe our summer heat knocked out the rest of the graft. So that thing just cooked in that dry heat. So Saturn peach, donut peach may not be suitable for our climate. It is a low chill hour and uh, it did not last. So I think we're gonna try to graft on some more varieties on this peach tree. We prune the heck out of this thing. In fact, we have a playlist on pruning it. And uh, it just grows. It just grows and grows and grows. Don't be afraid to tr prune your peach trees because they will forgive you in rapid growth the very next season. Like I said, we have about five different varieties, five or six different varieties of peaches growing on our property. And they all ripen successively early varieties except for this desert gold this desert gold ripens in september so peaches are a little smaller a little bit drier but they are they are gold and they are delicious delicious peaches it is our desert gold peach three in one all right back into our grove we've got like i said about seven different varieties of fruit trees over here we'll start over here to our left you can see growing right next to our air conditioner and it's fallen asleep. This is our wonderful pomegranate. We have different varieties of pomegranates also on our property. I'm trying to zoom in over here. But we have two left over. They're not quite ripe. And I'm not too sure if they are going to ripe because this tree is going to sleep. Production is over on this tree. It is going to sleep. We are starting to get our chill hours. This tree is in a very hot, sunny south and west facing location and the heat is over and this tree is finally going to sleep look at these beautiful leaves beautiful color if you like fall colors like I do we got them pomegranates is where it's at these things grow very aggressively they love deep watering they are drought tolerant when established they're not no water tolerant you gotta water them Got to water them regularly. Pomegranates do really, really well in Arizona. I believe this is like a 50 to maybe 200 chill hour tree right next to it. We are still pulling figs off this tree. It is starting to show its colors. This is a black mission fig right up against a wall. We prune the heck out of it. And we're going to be doing some grafting and we're going to be doing some rooting because we want to share this tree. This tree just produces a ton of figs. It's got figs all over it. We're still continuing to pull figs off of it. The ones that the birds don't get. Black Mission figs do really good here in the heat. Look at these massive leaves. 
Look at the size of these leaves. You don't find massive leaves like this much in Arizona at all, especially when the heat. Usually everything is dry and crispy. It's small. Guava. This is strawberry guava. We need to get a pollinator for her. She produces a ton of flowers. She's about four or five years old. I think she's five years old now. Strawberry guava. She does really good in the Arizona heat, but she needs a pollinator, so we haven't had any guava yet. Right next to her, this is our plum, Santa Rosa. Second year in the second summer, grown here in the desert. Produced plums on its first year in the ground. They were delicious. Santa Rosa plum, another low chill hour fruit tree. Plum tree, we have pluots. We have pluots and apricots, and they all pollinate each other. They all grow very close to each other, within 100 feet from each other, so they all pollinate each other. Right next to it is the Honeycrisp Apple. Like I said in every video, they say we can't do it. Honeycrisp Apple, it's growing. We haven't had any apples off of it yet. It's gonna be starting its seventh year in the ground. Just finished off its sixth summer here. It's very happy. We're gonna graft on other varieties of apples. Like I showed you earlier, we do have about four or five other apples apple varieties growing on our property. We're going to graft on more apples onto this tree because it's doing so well and it's very happy where it's at. Growing right next to our Pomona Sweet Lemon. And real quick, and you might have seen this in the very beginning of the video, these are our blackberries. We've got several varieties of blackberries growing on our property. These are the triple crowns. We have Primark Freedoms, we have Primark Travelers, we have Sweetie Pies, we've got Navajo, we got all kinds of blackberry growing in our backyard, all up against the wall. If you're interested in those, we're gonna get a video posting very shortly on our blackberries that we're growing in our vineyard, all up against the wall, very successfully growing all of this, all up against the wall in our backyard. Look at all this space we have in our backyard still growing several dozen varieties of plants, fruit trees, grapevines, blackberries. If that interests you, make sure you're subscribed. And if you're feeling frisky, hit that bell icon. That way you'll be notified of all of our videos. If you learned something cool, give this video a nice like. We do appreciate that. And like I mentioned before, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, suggestions on anything you've seen, growing in our backyard. If, you, if you're interested on any particular plant that we're growing back here, different varieties. We've been growing them for years, not without having any issues. Of course, the heat, drought, pests. I've seen hornworms back here lately. It's terrible, but uh, we're still persevering and we're still growing continuing to add new varieties every single year. So from my family to yours, thanks for watching.